I want to start with a question. How many of you are looking forward, as the decades go by, to having less energy and more brain fog? <laughs> I don't see many hands out there. But I will tell you that a lot of the people that I speak with in my work believe that this is inevitable. Good news, it's not inevitable. As a matter of fact, you have a great deal of control over maintaining the energy in your life and your mental sharpness. And as a matter of fact, if you engage in an activity that was embedded in you by your ancient ancestors, exercise, you can even grow new brain cells at any age. Take Don McNally, for example. Here's a picture of Don in his late 80s in the exuberant feeling after finishing one of his 744 marathons. Now, a marathon is 26.2 miles. I interviewed Don when he was in his uh, 85th year, and that year he added 29 new marathons to his total. But the most impressive thing about Don was his mental sharpness and his energy level which were as good as any 30-year-old that I would meet. And I want to be like Don when I grow up. <laughs> so here's another story about a fat, lazy kid. Me. Yeah, a lot of people assume that since I ran in the Olympics that uh, when I was in school, I would run circles around the kids on the playground, but that was not the case. And when I was 13 years old, my family moved from Green Cove Springs, Florida to Atlanta. I had attended 13 schools during my first seven years, and my academic uh, background was very spotty. In addition to that, uh, I had never gotten into any regular physical activity, uh, but I was going to be attending for my 14th school a very competitive, pressurized prep school where we were moving and I was really afraid more about the physical activity because that new school required all boys to go out for strenuous athletics after school. I had no skills, I had no conditioning, and I was way overweight. Well, I fell in first with a couple of kids who were lazy, and I tapped into their intel. And, and what it was is that during the winter quarter, you go out for cross country because the cross country coach was the most lenient in the school. And you could lie to him. You could tell him that you're gonna run on the trails in the woods when all you did is jog to the woods and hide out. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what I did the first week. But then an older kid who had watched me do this busted me and came up to me and said, Galloway, you're running with us today, and I knew they were real runners, so I had my strategy in place. I was going to reach the edge of the woods, grab my hamstring, and let them go. But they were funny, and then they started telling jokes about some of the other friends that were there, and, and it was all interactive in nature and fun, and then they started telling gossip about the other kids. Well, I didn't make it very far that first day, but each day I tried to go a little bit farther. But three things happened very quickly. First of all, even when I was physically exhausted, I felt better in my head and in my spirit than I had ever felt. Secondly, having been the new kid in class 13 different times, I had found it very difficult to break into the cliques at these schools. From the very first run that I took with these cross-country kids, they opened their world to me. I was accepted, I, I was trusted, uh, I was supported, and, and given advice on what I could do to get better. We were all in this as a team, and that totally changed my life. But another and third major area of change was I was struggling academically. Actually, that's a euphemism. I was at the bottom of my class. And uh, I was studying long hours. I just wasn't focused. But on those runs with the cross-country kids, most of whom were on the academic honor roll, I discovered that I was as smart as they were. I had the reasoning power that they did. It totally reset my expectations about myself. And I, too, found my way 
on the honor roll. But there were two questions that started then that propelled my work in this whole area of motivating people and empowering people. The first one was, how could, after all day long of stress building up, how could 10 minutes into the run, my stress would be gone? The second question was, even on the days when I was really wiped out after workouts, which were most of those uh, workouts, I could go home facing a pile of homework, very, very hard homework, and I could focus on it. I could learn better, and I would get better grades far better than I did before I started this whole exercise program. What was going on? So I started researching, I started studying, and what ended up being the product of all of that is my book, Mental Training. And I accessed a number of key experts in the field. And here they are. I totally recommend their works, their research, and the articles that they have written. But I have to tell you, after going through all of them and, and other experts, the research on the brain didn't really get started until the 1990s, when safe brain scanning devices were developed to be able to see what parts of the brain were turned on and also which circuits in the brain were turned on, and finally, which brain hormones were induced in order to create uh, certain situations. And it was discovered early on that exercise turns on the circuits for a better attitude, for more vitality, and for personal empowerment better than any other type of activity. Now, I knew that. That, that was no surprise to me, but it certainly has been a surprise to a lot of beginners. The area of research, though, that surprised the experts was that the part of the brain that was turned on for greatest benefit was an area called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is a critical thinking area of the brain. It's where learning occurs, where memory takes place, and where new growth of brain cells occurs. And, of course, that's particularly important for those who may have destroyed some brain cells earlier in life. <laughs> so there are huge benefits mentally to exercise. And the studies continue to come out every year. Three recent studies show there's a 20% boost in learning vocabulary words after a workout as opposed to before a workout. That a person that starts to run three days later has hundreds of thousands of new brain cells. And in memory tests, exercisers tend to score twice the scores of non-exercisers. So there's huge benefits going on here, but what was it in our evolutionary past that caused the connection of exercise and learning and brain activity? Well, it started six million years ago. Our ancestors, who were chimpanzees by DNA evidence, uh, experienced an energy crisis in which a climate change resulted in less food supply. And so the primates that became our ancestors started moving, started going farther uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And in the process, uh, they found that the brain that they started out with, the, the chimpanzee brain, was not ready for all of the new challenges that they had to try to find new food, to process new food, uh, to remember how to get back to where they started from, and on and on, all types of new challenges. So our ancestors, starting six million years ago, started the development of the human brain. It's an entirely different entity than the chimpanzee brain, which we still have. The human brain allows us to size up a situation, to set up a strategy, and then to move step by step towards whatever it is that we want to do. And as a result of the exercise, you're going to find the human brain turned on more. And you can tend to stay in the control of the human brain, which is then going to get you away from the negative hormones that can be produced by the chimpanzee brain. So you have a great deal of control over 
your motivation as you move forward. But just remember, it was exercise that actually developed our human brain, which makes us different than animals are. So a lot of you may now feel that exercise is probably a good thing. Raise your hand if you think that exercise might be a good thing for you. Yeah, yeah. But how many of you are thinking, yeah, but it's going to hurt, or I'm going to be exhausted, <laughs> or I'm going to puke? So any, any of those? Well, I'm going to take away that excuse because it never has to hurt. You can start with gentle walking for five to ten minutes. You can do that. And then you can increase every other day by three more minutes until you get up to the 30-minute threshold where these marvelous brain benefits are shown to occur. So you have an opportunity without puking, and I'm against puking, by the way, <laughs> to be able to make some major changes in your brain and in your life as a result. So now comes the fun part of my talk. It's the pep talk. First of all, remember that our human brain developed due to exercise. So we're going back to our roots when we do this. And that when we exercise, we turn on the brain for better learning, for better memory, and new growth of brain cells at any age. I'm not going to let those of you past a certain age get off the hook on this. You're going to still continue to grow new brain cells. You will also, when you exercise, turn on the circuits for a better attitude, for more vitality, and for personal empowerment that will keep changing your life for the better as things go by. And finally, exercise has been shown to take the stress hormones that start to build up and neutralize them. And when you need a pep up and you get in on your workout, you get going on your workout, you're going to rev up the pep up hormones there. So your body has a natural way of taking care of itself. So now is the time. Move your body and turn on your brain. Thank you. <laughs>